Yo, so everyone remembers Maito, right? The leader of the disaster curses, wielder of the idol transfiguration curse technique, master of the soul, and the one who made Yuji realize what his purpose actually is. We all saw what happened to Mahito at the end of the Shibuya incident. After long and strenuous fights against Nobara, Yuji, and Todo, he was weakened to a point where Kenjaku was able to use Suguru Geto's curse spirit manipulation technique on Mahito. He was then eaten, absorbed into the maximum Uzumaki technique, and from there his curse technique was extracted, essentially killing him in the process. This allowed Kenjaku to get a one-time usage of Idol Transfiguration to kickstart the culling games. This was honestly a great ending to Mahito as a character. Yuji managed to get his revenge licks in, and Mahito showed Yuji who he really was, further developing our protagonist. However, I think that there's a chance that Mahito's role in the story isn't over. Let's get into it. During the Kyoto Sister School Goodwill event, we get to see a flashback of Principal Gakuganji explaining to Norito Shikamo exactly why it is so important to exercise sorcerers with Jujutsu and not let them die by regular murder. Later during the Perfect Preparations arc, the seeds were further sown when we saw how Naoya Zenin was killed by Maki's mother, a non-sorcerer with a regular kitchen knife. This was then paid off during the Sakurajima colony part of the culling games when we saw how Naoya Zenin came back into the story as a vengeful cursed spirit. Here we can see a clear three-step process in setting up something and paying it off. First it gets explained, then it's shown happening, and finally we get to see the consequences of this at a later point. Obviously, this writing process can be ignored or deviated from to divert expectations, but it's fairly common for writers to do this. Both Megami and Yuki explain that curses are generally created when cursed energy leaks out of regular humans as a result of their emotions. This released cursed energy then builds up like a sediment until a cursed spirit is born. Places where crowds gather, like schools or hospitals, are especially susceptible to having curses form because of how much people experience negative emotions in those places. Mahito then explains that this concept also applies to humanity's collective fears and hatred. This is how the disaster curses were born. It can even apply to concepts that don't exist as long as humanity fears or associates negative emotions with them. The disaster curses were born from all the negative energy over the years surrounding the concepts of the earth, the sea, the forest, and humanity itself. Mahito specifically being born from all the hate and fear that humans have for one another forming into a curse. Mahito himself being a fairly newborn curse spirit since he was still in an unregistered special grade. Nanami also surmises this based on the way how Mahito was still experimenting with his abilities like he had just acquired them. The crazy thing is that only humans in Japan are actually creating and leaking enough cursed energy to form curses on a consistent basis. Of course, in the rest of the world without Tengen's barriers optimizing cursed energy, there are also still curses and sorcerers but incredibly few and far in between, like Miguel being a sorcerer from Kenya, or Kenjaku quote unquote importing the Ganesh looking curse from overseas. This ultimately means that Mahito was most likely born from the cursed energy of the measly population of 126.8 million people of Japan. This was confirmed in the panel where Kurorushi was being reborn where it specifically states that his cursed energy only came from the population of Japan and not the whole world. Mahito even said that all the negative energy of Japan alone was so much that the disaster curses gained consciousness before even forming. Now imagine if all the hate and negative emotions of all the people in the entire world created another Mahito-like being. Jogo himself did state that their group would eventually return in some shape or form. So it's entirely possible for Mahito to be even more powerful upon his return. Furthermore, with Kenjaku now in possession of Master Tengen, it would be possible for him to open up the barriers to the rest of the world. That would mean that 7.5 billion people on Earth would create a curse so much more powerful than Mahito, possibly this time even rivaling someone like Gojo or 20 Finger Sukuna. Another reason why I think it's highly likely that Mahito will return is that Kenjaku's plan that spans well over a thousand years would not even be possible without the existence of Mahito. See, his plan was to have a good amount of sorcerers either be reincarnated through ingested cursed objects or have people gain cursed techniques for the culling games. He was able to do both at the same time by using Tengen's barriers to extend the range of idol transfiguration, essentially casting it remotely. Except, how would he have reincarnated everyone at the same time, or created new sorcerers at the same time, or even cast the 10 barriers at the same time without idol transfiguration? We don't even know if it would have been possible for him to hijack Tengen's barriers to create the culling game barriers without idol transfiguration. 
All of this leads me to believe that there must have been another version of Mahito that existed in the past. This cursed spirit must have displayed its abilities to such an extent that Kenjaku would base his 1000 plus year plan on it. Especially when you consider Tengen's statement that the only reason the Cullen games are happening now and not at a later point in time is because everything just so happened to fall into place now. Kenjaku finding the Prism Realm overseas to seal Gojo, attaining cursed spirit manipulation through Suguru Geto, Toji breaking fate, turning Tengen into a being susceptible to cursed spirit manipulation, and Mahito's power and technique being grown in his battles against Yuji, to the point that Idol Transfiguration was powerful enough to accomplish Kenjaku's goals. This would then fall into the three-step process that we talked about earlier. First, the origin and possible rebirth of cursed spirits is explained. Then, we see one of the most important cursed spirits getting exercised. And lastly, them being born again into a different shape or form to repeat the cycle of curses that Yuki wanted to get rid of so badly. Thematically, there is also reason for Mahito to return. Mahito caused Yuji and his friends a huge deal of pain and suffering. While it was very nice to see that Yuji won the final fight by getting some clutch black flashes, I feel like the one part that wasn't very satisfying was that Yuji didn't get the kill. Mahito spent all of their fight trying to teach Yuji that they are both the same and that they live to kill each other's species without thought, yet Yuji wasn't able to get that kill in the end. I understand why it was written this way though, because it was the perfect setup leading into the Culling Games, and with the hints that were dropped before, it's definitely possible that Mahito can come back allowing Yuji to finally get his payback. There's also that Yuji needs to move past the COG mentality to truly level up. Attaining the COG mentality was good because it gave him purpose to continue fighting at his peak even if he couldn't see a reason to anymore. But in this series, it's heavily implied that the only ones to truly become strong are those that are selfish in their beliefs and fight for what they want and not for what is expected which is the exact opposite of what the COG mentality is doing for Yuji right now. With the craziness that happened in chapter 212, Yuji was freed from Sukuna. That means that he'll no longer have free protection from Idol Transfiguration. Sukuna protected Yuji in a lot of his fights against Mahito, such as being immune to Idol Transfiguration because of Sukuna's soul protection and Mahito not being allowed to cast his domain onto Yuji, otherwise Sukuna would one-shot him for even daring to touch his soul. If Yuji had a power-up and overcame Mahito without Sukuna, it would give Yuji a thematic win and a power scaling win that he finally accomplished on his own, allowing him to move past just being a simple cog in the system. It could be handled as a mini-arc similar to Maki's fight against Naoya where she got bodied, gained understanding, and then was able to quickly take care of her opponent. Oh and lastly there's this panel where Yuji himself acknowledges that Mahito can come back, and that even if he does, Yuji will be there to exercise him. Originally, I thought it was pretty much a given that we were going to get to see a version of Mahito again, except he'd now be powered by all the humans in the world, either speeding up his birth process or making him stronger than before. But honestly, since I started writing this script, Gege Akutami said that they hoped to finish the story within a year. While I didn't believe that it was possible at first, chapter 211 made me change my mind after seeing how Gege has completely skipped over many events that were taking place, such as the other colonies in Japan, the soldiers getting slaughtered by the curses at night, and our main gang trying to save them as much as possible. I honestly just hope that the story doesn't get a rushed ending and manages to tie up all its running plot threads while Gege gets to explore as many possibilities as they'd like to. But what do you think? Do you think that Mahito or a similar humanity-based curse can return again in the story before it ends? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks for watching this video to the end guys, it really means a lot. If you like this video, then make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and if you have anything else you want to mention, please let me know in the comments down below. See ya!